most likely they will be choosing a bruiser for Dark Potato in that jungle, and Celeste is really good at this. All right, well, let's see if they go with it. It's going to be the Alpha! What? So uh, Lady Alpha going to make her uh, her appearance there. So Arden Alpha, wow. Uh, kind of kind of surprised to me. Rome did it catch you off guard. Well, that first day, actually, this composition, um, they ran uh, Catherine, Alpha, and Taka. This was that first day um, for the round of 32. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. For the Lemon and Lime side, and they executed very well. Like, they started off a little bit shaky, but later on, like, we just saw the dives coming out of them, the executions coming on their end, and it worked out really well for them. Yeah, definitely. And okay, so the Black Feather, the second pick here for G2 King, when they've got the Vox, we know this the Vox is a hero. He wants to, he's going to be jumping around the fight, uh, Sonic zooming. He's going to try and kite targets as much as possible. That's where that's where Vox likes to live, right in between that uh, that range. But Alpha, a hero that can close the gap on him, like like lights out. But it's going to be very hard. Um, I feel the composition coming out of G2 Kingwin is very heavy towards that mid and late game. They will suffer a little bit in the early game, but if Fortress gets into the right positioning, um, they do have a lot of movement room. They don't have to deal with so much pressure on their end. But Lemon and Lime, what can they really do here? Like They really have to execute both Vox and Black Feather fairly quickly. They can't win in a sustained fight. Um, they can't draw it out as long as possible. Oh, it's going to be Kestrel as the last pick here. Uh, rounds it out pretty decently. And uh, how do you feel about this last pick? You know what? I'm going to be so excited to watch what kind of how they're going to execute this composition. We don't see too much Kestrel. We don't see too much Alpha. Yeah. Throwing them both together and going up against G2 Kingwin. You know, going up against G2 Kingwin. So you can have a, quite a bit of confidence. You have quite a bit of practice in the background. You know, it's going to be an exciting match to watch. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the things I don't feel that Lemon and Lion is lacking in. Uh, I don't think that they lack confidence at all. For some reason, they came together, and uh, maybe it's just the early winning stages. Uh, I feel like this team could really accomplish anything, guys. But we've loaded into the Halcyon fold, so ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and hop right in there and toss it to our casters, Action Jackson and Vettius. Take it away. Man, this is going to be an awesome series. Already we're seeing some interesting stuff here from Lemon and Lime. They're the team that always pulls out the crazy strats. We got Alpha, Kestrel, and Arden here. I do. I don't know if I like this as much as the uh, Alpha Taka Catherine Vedius. Yeah, I What agree. do you think about the comp? Uh, I think it's quite interesting. Uh, personally, I've never seen this combination of heroes before. So how it actually works is, um, or how at least they choose to play it is going to be quite an interesting one. Uh, but obviously, we, we have Arc Lost in the jungle. This is where he likes to be. Kestrel up in the jungle as well. Alpha's going to be in the lane. I think Alpha might struggle a little bit up against... Um, up against Reddix and actually looking at things, I think Appfall might have a few uh, technical issues right now. So I imagine the pause is going to come through relatively soon. Um, but yeah, looking at Arc Loss right now on this Kestrel, uh, he's going to have a lot of damage in the early game. He is going to be going for that weapon power, which means that uh, Appfall is does have a lot of crystal power available to him. Uh, and yeah, there's the pause. Uh, just going to quickly talk to Appfall, see if we can get that issue resolved. Uh, but this gives us a great opportunity to talk about these team compositions. So, yeah, if we look at... Let's start with the easy one. Let's start with G2. G2 have a scaling composition, as you heard from Rome. It's going to take a little while to ramp up. You have the Black Feather, you have the Vox. They're going to be relying on hitting the, the big item spikes, like the Serpent's Mask and the Shiver Steel to sit on the back line uh, for Black Feather. Meanwhile, Vox going to be waiting for, likely, that alternating current into the Broken Myth. Very, very standard to what we're used to seeing. Uh, not too unconventional. Uh, and it's just very geared towards the mid to late game, which from G2, not that surprising. Uh, meanwhile, let, let's now talk about this Kestrel and the Alpha. Kestrel, uh, this composition actually does quite well in the mid game. We have to remember that Alpha is quite item reliant. She does need these items to, to really hit a point at which she can start getting involved in these fights. And if you try and force the fight early, even against a composition that takes a while to scale up, she will struggle. So she, she's going to take a little while to ramp up, and I feel like the mid game, once like one major item is completed, like the Sorrow Blade for Kestrel and the Aftershock for Apple, is really where we're going to see this composition shine for Lemon and Lime. I'm inclined to agree with you. I think uh, around then is when it's going to get the most strong. But whilst we're waiting for this pause to get resolved, guys, let's hear a little bit more from our analysts. Now that they know what the draft is all about, I'm sure they have a lot of thoughts on it. 
Well, basically, you know, the deal is uh, I really wanted to to get a, a little more insight from Rome on this composition, so I kicked some cables over here. Really, no. And, and uh, <laughs> made sure that we got back up uh, on camera. No, I'm just kidding, guys. We, you know, a little technical difficulty there, but uh, working it all out. But uh, Rome, since we're here, since we have a second, we're kind of surprised with uh, that alpha pick in the Kestrel right there. And your your hair is uh, so on point right now. It's uh, so distracting. I, I just can't even I can't even look at you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, how how are we, how do we expect this composition to be playing out? Well, you do have that um, that alpha up in the lane. I feel like it's going to be a little bit hard for her to farm, but she is going up against a Vox, so then it does tend to favor a bit more on the Vox's side. He has that yep. mobility. Um, he's just able to get that resonance out, and he can put a little bit of pressure on. Like, you can't rotate too much with Alpha, but you do have a second life early on, um, just using the ultimate, using that reboot. But yep. then, again, in that jungle, it's going to be very hard. Um, you do have Kestrel, who is very dominant. But then, then again, we see that game is already starting off, so we will be throwing it back to the caster so then they can take you out to the show. All right, thank you very much, guys. Sorry about this to everyone who's watching. Thankfully, the pause has been resolved, so we're not having too many technical issues anymore. Apple has returned and is starting to farm up a storm in the lane. It's going to be interesting to see, though, if G2K can find any fight here as they are aggressing a little bit. Dark Potato, Reddix, and Lore all down by that shop. So, something popped into my head during the pause, Jackson. Uh, and that was when you and I had a conversation with Team Secret back at the lives, and they told us about this secret Kestrit pick that they were planning, but they only wanted to bring it out if the enemy team picked a Black Feather. Now, the great thing about Kestrel is she actually does really well into Black Feather, and it's actually that much easier to kite him out thanks to the active camo. If he uses that Rose Offensive to get onto you, it's quite an obvious move. And what you can do is you can pop that active camo, and he then has to rose offensive what is effectively into the active camo, to which you can then reposition, glimmer shot, get the stun off, and then you're in a great position to then kite around the black feather. So I imagine this Kestrel pick is actually in response to that black feather pick, because it has been talked about by some high elo teams to be quite an effective counter. Well, we are gonna see some fighting going on right now. Apple very quickly rotating down here. Lore gets obliterated. G2K, I don't think they expected the rotation to happen that quickly. Ares does take a decent chunk off the back of uh, extending to try and get some vision there. But overall, a very nice early fight for Lemon and Lime. You heard Rome talking earlier on about how much these guys like to work as a team and how much synergy they have. And for using his boots from the lane to just quickly rotate down, get a bit of extra damage down, and help his teammates out in securing themselves the first blood of the game. So Lemon and Lime already off to a great start with Arkloss securing this first blood. And really, what better a person to have that first blood on? Oh man, there's there's no one better on the side of Lemon and Lime, I would argue. Uh, I feel like Arc Lost in Space is the big carry on their team, with Apful kind of supplementing that. So yeah, I agree. Makes a lot of sense. Also in fights, when you literally have a hero on your lineup that's designed to kamikaze in, do you want all the gold on him? Probably not. You want it on the person who's actually going to be cutting back and dealing consistent damage through the fight. So, Active makes demo. sense. Yeah, he gets one glimmer shot down, but not too much. That's sending a message, mate. That's sending a message. <laughs> and what he's like is, you can't see me, but I'm always watching you. And now, that could uh, result in Reddix playing a little bit more defensively. That was maybe a, a, little a bit very reserved. convincing impression of someone who's really creepy. That is. <laughs> What can I say? I've had a lot of practice, me. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ample right now up in the lane, taking a lot of harass. We we did mention that when you are playing this alpha, you will struggle against a ranged carry because you are that melee. But on top of that, your core overloads will result in you taking damage to yourself. So until you get a bit of sustain, it, uh, it will hurt you in lane. Um, but that is just the nature of playing alpha. It does pay off as the game progresses. Oh, oh. very clutch right there. So close. Bill could actually Whoa. go down here. Yeah, Apple. he's gonna have to reboot. It's okay though, it's okay. I actually have kinda like that. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect, Apple's like, guys, there's something wrong with my HP, guys. And they're like, hey, Apple, just turn it off and on again. It's like, genius. So he resets the passive oh, and gets full health. Oh. Or on the other hand, does not have the ability to reboot. He's a dog, and he goes down. <laughs> so, two quick kills going the way of Lemon Lime. Oh, this not gonna land. Calm down, wow, okay. Wow, sorry. 
bit much. We lost it there, but we've got Best it again. Wrong. It's good. <laughs> last game of the day. This always happens to us. Um, <laughs> well, last series of the day, anyway. Um, but Arc um, lost. Harry's. Doing a great job up in the lane. Oh. <laughs> wow. Harry's. Wow. What is okay. with this game? It's lemon and lime. This, it's lemon attack. and lime, dude. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be like this. They intentionally put these guys last because they knew it would wake everybody up. <laughs> we had a team secret game that was 25 minutes long where we only had 10 kills in the entire game. And lemon and lime are like, yeah, all right, our turn. And already in the first six minutes, we got two kills and people rebooting, dying all over the shop, crazy action. And we get alpha. So. I think the community are looking forward to this game. I know, I was looking in the chat, loads of new Lemon and Lime fans come up, and people were saying stuff like, Lemon and Lime, establish the meta. And if <laughs> things keep going the way they, you know, the, they have been so far, it could very well be the case. Well, I mean, they're one of the only teams playing Alpha, right? That's, that's they a good They are the only team, at least yeah. in competitive, that I know of. So, I was actually on a podcast earlier this week, and uh, I was asked to give my predictions, and I, I believe the Lemon and Lime will take this match. I think... They they are the underdogs, but they're not underdogs by a great deal. Like they they have really been showing up recently, um, and I think their their confidence in trying these new strategies really throws their opponents off guard. Apple right now might be caught out a little bit, but he's gonna go for that self destruct. Deals a decent chunk of damage on Dark Potato. Something that just occurred to me is how ridiculous the burst damage is for them. Look at this Dark oh, nice. Potato. He's gonna go down. Lore follows. What is this, Redix? He might fall too, just barely able to get out of there. If you self-destruct into a one-shot, one-kill, you are going to pop someone. But the big thing about that was actually the active Whoa. camo coming up from Arclos. Ooh, up in the lane. Nope, we're good. Atfall, I don't think he's done it. Oh, Atfall, he oh. doesn't have the reboot. Oh. He's dead. Oh, <laughs> Atfall, shame on you. That was that was shocking. You got greedy, Atfall, and you paid for it with your life, but your team's going to try and uh, uh, avenge you. <laughs> you got that there eventually. I got there As eventually. did Ark lost in the space. He picks up the kill. It's five for one right now. Lemon and Lime having a great early game. They got to keep this momentum going, though, because I do feel like later on that Vox, that Black Feather are going to kick into high gear. But yeah, I want to come back to that fight because it was actually really well played from Arc Lost. And it, it comes back to what I was talking about early on in the sense that Kestrel counters Black Feather because you use that active camo. The Black Feather then, because he wants to close the gap, walks on top of it. Arc Lost repositioned, used the Glimmer Shot to get the stun off down onto Dark Potato, and then they just insta-popped him. He doesn't have that much defense. Actually, you can see he's already stacking all that armor because the amount of damage Kestra's Whoa. doing. Apple, though, taking a lot of damage up in the lane. He has got a reboot available, though. He needs to be careful. He needs a reflex block to survive <laughs> there. What am I watching right now? Apple, calm down. Lord, oh my what word. is that damage? <laughs> We're going to have Ares coming in from the side, but he can't get there in time. Arc Lost in space goes down. Apple, he's not interested in joining this fight, apparently. Uh, he's just going to be farming up, even though he's got the reboot available. Ares needs to be careful. Gauntlet goes down. Dark Potato's actually trapped in a very dicey position. Apple wants to go for the kill. He's going to start rebooting now. Dark Potato, can he find a return? Ares just barely. <laughs> oh, he goes down. Prime Directive, it does not land on a Redix either. This is a messy game. This is this is seriously messy. We had this like the why... clinical performance earlier from Cerberus, <laughs> and then we've got this. This is why Lemon and Lime have the highest kills in the Vainglory <laughs> League so far, because this is all their games are. Just action all over the shop. This is what the community wants. They want a bloodbath, and Lemon and Lime are always the team to deliver. This is why they've got such a big fan base in such a short space of time. This team is so fun to watch. And that player right there, Apple just took so much damage that he was like, yo, Ares, I can't help you out. And he's like, why can't you help me out? And he's like, because I was farming. And and, <laughs> and Apple and Ares was just like, well, come on. And he's like, dude, priorities. We've already established this in the last two weeks of the VGL. So fortunately, with a great um, gauntlet coming out from Ares and some fantastic mechanics coming out from Doc Potato, it ends up being a two for two overall, I believe. But very back and forth. Right now, Lemon and Lime holding on to the gold lead. But they're going to try and change that. Arc lost in space, doing some good damage right there. Does have the reflex block and finds that first kill with his team. But he does eventually go down. Now Apfel going for the self-destruct. Can he pop Dark Potato? Oh, he He's not in range. He didn't quite get there and the reboot does not complete. You just blue screened, dude. Ares trying to run under the turret. Manages to get to safety. But G2K starting to step things up a little bit. 
that was very unfortunate by Appfall. He used his laser just a little bit too soon. You need to time it so that it goes off about the time that you lose your movement speed. Oh! And, oh, hang on. Snipe happened. One shot, one kill. Very nice play by Ark Lost. He just likes these characters with global ultimates, you know? Yeah, he does, Solar yeah. Storm, one shot, one kill. Give him one of those any day. Nice snipe going out from Ark Lost. Uh, very, uh, I never thought about it. An archer getting a snipe. Yeah, great. Cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so, bloody game. I think we can both agree. Gold payout picked up for Lemon and Lime. Now, in the British forward, way or like in, in is bloody? Like, no, it's bloody, bloody game is in this. Oh, okay, there is right. lots it's of... confusing when you say it. What? So. <laughs> Apple, look at, look at Apple right now. He's fine. He's got reboot. He's going to be so okay. Probably. Maybe. He, he should probably be a bit more careful, though. He's <laughs> at full. Just because you have reboot doesn't mean you should reboot. You gotta save your work first. Because <laughs> now his ult isn't available. Yeah, like... That's a lot of damage. He's taking so much damage for no reason. It's killing me. He doesn't care. He just doesn't care. <laughs> Ultimate <laughs> swag. <laughs> but it, it's, it's hilarious. Like, I actually think this is... Because the cooldown isn't that long, right? It's not. You can you can quite easily ha reboot and then you have it ready for the next engagement. But it's the fact that he takes a lot of harassment and he's like, meh, you know what? I should just die, come back. And as long as I come back underneath the turret, then it's fine because they're not going to be able to dive me. So it, it's smart, but is it? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like he was trying to bait them in, but maybe not. And that's why it's such a good bait. You can't tell. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, Reddix. Taking a lot of damage there. One shot, one kill would I think take him down, but I don't know if he's gonna be able to find it. Redix is positioned fairly well. Apple leading the charge right now. Gonna have to go for that self destruct. Just barely times it. That was so close. He might find Redix. He does. It. Lore nearly goes down, but Apple's tanking up the turret. He's going to fall. He had a virus there. Yeah. Yes, he did indeed, and it was called a turret, and apparently if you download too much of it, it completely overrides your system. Right now, Lemon and Lime in a great position to set up for Siege. Dark Potato! Oh, dark Potato! One more Glimmer Shot would probably be enough, but our boss can't quite close the gap. They're just going to take the turret instead. Man, this game is so messy. It's exciting, that's what I call it. It's, uh... <laughs> it definitely woke me up. He definitely yeah. woke me up. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Appful, just, I love his crazy aggression. You know, like, it's the fact that he's not afraid to force these fights whenever. He's just going in. He's like, yeah, my team will come, probably. Like, it's not a problem. And that ult, that, getting that snipe kill right at the end of the fight was beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Really enjoying this play coming out from Appful. Uh, he is uh, struggling in the farm department, but he doesn't care. Because if you just look at his items, <laughs> completely alternating current, completely aftershock. He's like, you'd like to think you have more gold than me, but you don't. And he's actually got an item advantage over Reddix right now. Oh, we're going to see another fight kicking off here. Our Blossom Space does get silenced by that wait for it. Ares on the back line, just trying to run interference. Reddick's kiting around the place, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. First kill is actually on our Blossom Space, but Apful hunts one down. Doesn't use the self-destruct towards the end there. Ares trying to buy him time for that reboot. He just comes back. This fight is over. Ares, he picks up Dark Potato. Apfo gets the other one. Man, if you don't actually get the kill onto the rebooting uh, uh, Apfo, you, you are going to lose the fight. I feel like that's guaranteed. Yeah, it is it's a 4v3 when she comes point. back. Because she, uh, I, uh, after she reboots, she does lose her her um her cause the the b ability that she stacks um but it's okay because she still has a lot of damage regardless and pretty much all of her abilities will have come off cooldown by then so the moment she comes out of that reboot she's gonna have all of her damage available to her she can't ult and she didn't ult in that fight which i think was a big misplay but they still it doesn't matter because they come out ahead they get the ace for one so many resources were invested into Argos. i think his positioning was a little bit skewed because what actually happened was Ares did a great job with the Gauntlet splitting up the team of G2, but then Arclos committed too hard onto uh, Dark Potato, and then the flank came out from the rest of G2. Oh, Speaking of flanks, go. they're going for one. Look at Dark Potato right off the bat, taking a ton of damage. Prime Directive jumps at full forwards. The one shot, one kill blocked by Lore, but everyone is still pretty healthy on Lemon and Lime. Especially when Apple, Apple has the ability to self-destruct. He's going to use it. Can he get on top of anyone, though? He's actually just going to use it on the turret. That was interesting.
It's not how I would have played that. <laughs> no, that is not how I would have played it either. Like, he wasn't going to get out. He was 100% going to draw turret aggro. Uh, there wasn't a situation that sat there and said, <laughs> No, 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 you, you go ahead. You dive me. Uh, like, I'm not going to attack you. I'm just a turret. Like, it was clearly going to focus you down. They do force all of G2 back, though, and they're going to secure themselves to turret. <laughs> so, Apple's going to be like, Guys, it was planned. It was all for the this, objective. This strategy is ridiculous, right? You dive with self-destruct onto a turret in order to just buy time for you to kill the turret. It's like, add this to a saw push comp and you're good. Right? <laughs> no, don't. Don't listen to this guy. Don't. <laughs> that is not helpful <laughs> advice. <laughs> this isn't even my, this isn't my strategy. This is their strategy. <laughs> They're just using him to force people off of turrets. They're just, I don't, I don't even know if, I don't know if they have, if they give Apple a strategy. I think Apple, <laughs> you know, like the Hulk, <laughs> have you seen the Avengers where like <laughs> Captain America gives everyone a plan and then he turns to the Hulk and he's like, Hulk. Smash! Like this is what they're doing to Apple right now. He's literally just—he's just been like, Apple, you just—you just do whatever you want. He's just like, must kill, and then he's just running around trying to kill everyone. And now he's decided it's time to kill the Kraken. Well, you've heard it from Humanist before. He is the Terminator. Kraken goes down pretty darn quick. Gets unleashed. E2K. I feel like they're kind of, you know, like deer in the headlights, just startled. Like, what do we do? <laughs> What like, happened? We're startled. We... we can't keep track of what's going on. It must be even harder if you're in the game. How do we counter Alpha? What's going on? So, this is the justification that I gave when I was explaining why I think that Lemon Lime would come out ahead in this game. How do you draft against them? Like, well, Rome they just believes play they have a, a... whatever they want. Like, Rome nothing. believes they have a shallow hero pool. We have to think, like, everything that they've brought out isn't, like that new kestrel isn't a, a sudden random pick kestrel has been rising in popularity you're right and alpha Celeste we've jungle seen... is totally normal <laughs> totally normal <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but you would expect it from art class but anyway we're sidetracked because look lemon and lime they're cracking into the base they really are and i don't know if there's too much g2k can do about this reddick's getting chunked on the back side dark potato already pretty low apple has self-destruct has the reboot available he's just leading the charge he is literally drawing all of the attention just to buy They're time. They're going for this. They're the going boot is going to happen. Lemon and Lime, they pick up the Vein Crystal. Some people might call it an upset. I would not. Lemon and Lime are here to stay in the VGL. You can see why these guys had the most kills here in the VGL this season so far. This new team that has been put together, obviously Ampful and Arklost have played together before, but this, this Lemon and Lime roster is incredible to me they they're just having so much fun that's just what it seems to me like they're just playing their style and arc lost yes six three and three definitely mechanical gods his positioning was fantastic what we'd expect from him Ares landed some phenomenal gauntlets he was uh, providing the support that we expect to see from him again right but for me the standout player was Apple, right? Because <laughs> this guy just doesn't care. He, he just should mix be. plays <laughs> all the time, but he doesn't think about the ramifications, he just makes them. And he feels Are they that his plays? team can just can just follow up somehow. It's almost like you know, it's like you're following a baby around that's just trying to touch all of the electric sockets in the house. <laughs> you're just like because they're like, no, 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 stop, 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 and then you're quickly picking them up, and then you're, you know, you're quickly covering the sockets up, and you're just like, no, it's fine, it's fine, we've covered this, and then eventually you put the baby to bed, and he's just like, okay, finally, we've won the game. Now we have to go through that all over again in game two. Oh, man. It reminds me of, like, the geniuses of history, right? Everyone thinks they're insane at the time, but they're not. They're geniuses. I feel like that's <laughs> what Apple is, maybe. Or he's insane. It's, it's really hard to tell. But, guys, this is our perspective. We think Apple's a genius. Let's hear from Humanist in Rome. <laughs> guys, was that planned? Like, was that how you should play Alpha? Or are we just seeing crazy stuff happen here?